All right, and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Uh, this is uh, the Foreman Ballistic Only Permanent Dark Events run, and we have a couple of other side um, effects as well. Uh, you should know it by now, though, and I do have a very, very nice mission prepared for today. We're going to look at the Codex Brain Extraction, which is not only going to progress our storyline, but we would also um, hopefully uh, get the option to skulljack one of the code, uh, codices and summon our first avatar. Uh, with the avatar, we should be able to um, continue the game and at least um, be, be technically able to, to finish the game. Um, so uh, to, uh, to unlock the last two missions. However, that is still a little bit far uh, further away. Because number one, we need to level Mystic, our Templar, to the highest level. Number two, because we still need to defeat all of the three chosen. And that's definitely not going to be an easy task. Uh, we are going to take a different squad with us again. I like the idea of running with the Skirmisher and the Templar for now. Praetor Mox is going to have the skull check. And we're having our Grenadier in our support. So it's kind of the team from two missions ago, pretty much same equipment, same team. And uh, since they could handle 150 enemies, I suppose they are being able to handle uh, what appears to be 16 enemies as well. Lots of them are going to be chrysalids, but that's fine, I don't mind that. As long as we can get one of the codices uh, and actually kill it we should be golden. Most likely, just judging from the sheer amount of kills that we obtained also with our Templar, we will see how Mystic reaches the Templar rank in the next mission. And that should be a pretty decent uh, start for us then, or a pretty decent uh, moment in time, uh, because we're getting very, very close to that um, to that moment when we're uh, challenging our first chosen one. But for now, we landed in the middle of a desert. I love desert missions. I think uh, the landscape just looks fabulous. And I think I've never had uh, the uh, the uh, the codex coordinates at the des uh, desert mission. Whatever, let's try to, uh, let's try to find the gate and the gatekeeper, as well as the remaining codices. Uh, codices. Uh, we landed, uh, being fully uh, concealed, which means we can spot out what exactly is going on. Oh wow, that's a that's an impressive pack. We can spot out what's going on and since we have all the time in the world we shouldn't have any problems. Two Archons and one Andromedon. That's a pretty brutal pack. These here are Chrysalids. And we know that the portal is over here. That's seven chrysalids, three um, other enemies, so gatekeeper and archons, uh, not gatekeeper and archons, uh, but andromedons and archons, so that's seven, then there's the gatekeeper that's eight, uh, ten, uh, the gatekeeper that's eleven, and the rest should be filled up with cod uh, codices, so five codices. 
unless I'm missing something. There we go. Putting everyone on Overwatch. I'm I'm still hoping that we could catch one pack out, like by themselves. It's so hard to see anything down here. What the F is going on? Yeah, there's the pack of both of uh, the the codices. Don't want to trigger them uh, now. I would want to let them go away and actually start with the other pack first. Well, I'm not sure, but I think might be better off uh, starting to get down here. Almost certain that we can't just wait on top of the house. That's not going to fly. But we do still have high ground. We just need to wait for one of the packs to, to actually join us. As you can see, I'm trying to be as mindful as possible uh, with not standing together. Um, many of the enemies that we're facing, including the Andromedon, do have some sort of uh, grenades. Yeah, we could technically... We could technically attack them. But I don't want to do that. Let's shortly scout out if everything is okay down here. The other pack is still standing over there. Which I wouldn't necessarily say is okay because that's still very close. So the other pack stands here. Just want, don't want to trigger both packs together, because the, uh, the, this alone is 150, almost 200 hit points. Just, just that pack, that's a massive, massive pack. This here with 52 is also sizable. Yeah, we can't move away. But I think the uh, the co uh, the codices, uh, codices will not move up to us. We'll just wait it out. I'm confident that they are not going to climb up here. I don't want to pull right now because although the codices are out of uh, range, uh, out of sight, I know that they could join us like any uh, any time. So I suppose we're going. We're just going to wait until they are out of line of sight again, or maybe. We're not giving a damn. Maybe <laughs> we're just being spotted out. By the way, one of the code uh, codices is immediately down. We are going to ignore the other one because we are uh, we need to um, still slice him. Um, up with the with the uh, with the 
Um, what's it called? There we go, Skulljack, of course. Good old Skulljack. Uh, so we'll wait. Do not let that happen immediately. Since this is going to be the team with uh, or the pack with the most hit points, I'd uh, I'd like to use our trick again, which is effectively team working. Do not spend, uh, do not waste any of the actions. Then afterwards, shredding and taking uh, and taking the the cover away. Battle Frenzy isn't too bad because that means he's probably going for blazing uh, pylons. We are giving over one um, one turn uh, to our Grenadier. This is mainly for shredding uh, the Andromedon. Worked like a charm. We haven't really uh, killed it. That's still fine. I think we're we're not in a bad position at all. I want to get it down to its secondary form because then we can just block the entrance here, and that's pretty much about it. It can't move up, or we just position our, ourselves down here. And for we need, we would need to stand here or up here. Anyways, um, we do have threat assessment, and I like the idea of giving her the Overwatch. No, oh, actually, you know what? Nah. Let's give her the overwatch. So aid protocol, threat assessment gives an automatic overwatch. And we're continuing to harass the Andromedon. I'll take the free hair trigger. Okay, so unfortunately, hmm, can we reposition ourselves without endangering uh, the situation too much? If if we reposition to here, we might pull another pack. I'm just thinking. Um. Three to four damage, and that's six to seven. So we're looking at nine. Uh, we're probably requiring a bit more damage than that. Which means let's block off this area here, although it took us. An action to move this here brings down the Andromedon to seven hit points I think we can just kill it Uh, 
Right. Um, moving up here would block the other entrance, so that means the suit would need to walk all the way. Meanwhile, next target is going to be one of the Archons. We're definitely going to take damage. I cannot foresee how how we wouldn't take any damage. One of them will blazing pal uh, pylon, the other one will probably attack us. Which means on the other hand, might as well go for parry. Oh, and we got a chosen one. Interesting. So, Adversary Templars takes increased damage from Templars. Guess who's going to haunt you? Low profile. Um, defense increases after first attack on every turn. Okay. Chance to, uh, for return fire. We know that. Can summon troopers. We know that. Reveals all concealed units. We know that as well. And regenerates lost health. I think we're okay though. It's looking like That's the easiest of all three of them. 120 hit points. Holy moly. The chosen aren't going to make this easy for us. Keep your heads down and press forward. We need to get to their location. There we go, some extra damage. It's going to be a solid parry. I can't avoid their attack for much longer. There are the blazing pinions. I called it out. I knew they were about to happen. Now they will stack a Psy Bomb on top of it. Teleport, Psy Bomb. Oh. Well, the weapon was already empty, so joke's on you. And this guy missed. Well, interesting. Okay, I suppose we will start to kill the Archon first. And we're going to do that with Amplify. Lightning hands in his face. Hmm, might want to move over here. Alternatively, we could move over to here. Both, both would be viable positions. Down here is in range of the suit. So might as well move over here and just take the reload. Okay, we could technically get ourselves over here. That's not too bad. I like the idea. By the way, super high damage against this uh, against the suit because we do have blue screen rounds. But the suit itself is is relatively immobile and cannot do all too much. And on top of uh, which, we could theoretically um, control it. So, I mean, down here would be yet another good place. What's our chance for Haywire protocoling this guy? Because having an extra body for 40 hit points isn't the worst idea. 50% chance, I'll take it. 
I'll take it. So we just need a bit of a better position. They do not have any uh, grenades, so we're okay. They can anyways flank us, so standing in the open in this specific case doesn't make any difference because the Archons can just fly to us. Taking over. There you go, good boy. That's an excellent scout for uh, for the uh, for the whole. Oh no! Wait a second. We we won't fight the um, the chrysalids yet. We're going to uh, fight the avatar soon. But this guy is still okay for the avatar. All right. So as I was saying. We're continuing to hit this guy. Good job, by the way. And we are repositioning ourselves to not take any more damage. Trying to deal, uh, to dish out the maximum damage. Unfortunately, we couldn't see the other Archon here. Uh, Archons, um, normally you would see it and it would have full cover, but since, uh, since Archons, likewise, the two gatekeepers cannot take co uh, cover, um, they do not follow the same rules as to be seen uh, around corners. So we are attacking. There we go. Even some more damage. And we're moving up here. Overall, a pretty decent turn. The two of them are now starting a little one on one down there it only took one hit so far and I can heal that up they won't hold up long at this rate commander yeah and we need to ignore um, the codex for now Oh, hello. Tracking shot. Wonderful. Alright, I'll be back in half a minute. Sorry, something came up. Um, we'll continue.
All right, let's go, buddies. Let's go. So our target is clearly to finish up uh, this um, Archon down there. Which means we're going to have a little bit of fist fight. We also very much need to get out of the range of the tracking shot. What gigantic range is this tracking shot ha having? Oh. Well. I suppose we have no other choice than to do it with these three here. Um, because we will need to double move in order to, to position ourselves, like, anywhere. Um, Uh, this um, Archon is nearly down. Problem is we have no one else to take an action, so we need to move into the open here to barely get out of tracking range shot. And of course, this tree blocks our vision. <laughs> that is so bad. Okay, we, we still have the issue that there is a second um, Archon down there. I don't want to be in, in melee or continue to be in melee. So we're going to move down. To I don't want to take any uh, further damage. Let's reload. And we're going to tank uh, this guy with um, Perry. There we go. Zero damage taken. That indeed was the right turn. Um, I think we're going to take one shot uh, from the uh, from the Codex here. Wow. It's rolling bad. Like the codex has 60 or 17-ish um, chance to hit. Keeping my eye on you, I relish these quiet moments before the strike. Let's continue with the Archon. We're moving our... Yo, oh, wait a second. All right, I'll go. So we're moving out of tracking shot range. And continuing to mark the Archon up here. Once this guy dies, we should be fine and can start uh, summoning the Avatar. Once we school jack um, the codex, the avatar will spawn. So we have one further turn on the Andro Andromedon shell. And we might as well use it, to be honest. Another miss, unfortunate. Let's 
So moving over here. Closing on target position now. Basically trying to deal as much damage as possible. Uh, oh fuck. I was unfortunately hitting the uh, the shell and not the Archon. This guy is going to die, and we're going to kill off the shell next. After the shell dies, we can um, aim for the avatar. Getting out of there. So let's finish off the Archon first. Move out to here. So we need to continue moving. Somehow it's always open cover. I don't want to go too close to the trees because this here is where the chrysalids have buried them, uh, burrowed themselves. So. Again, although it's open ground, it's overall okay. Reload. Another 10 points of damage. We're going to give our aid protocol to Torch. Mainly because I don't want her to stand in the open. And then we're finishing our, uh, our armor. There we go, Andromedon Shell. It's down. It's a nice little spot. I, I think move. we can kill her there. I can see further than you think. Are we ready for an avatar? I 
mean, most likely, I suppose we are. Good, in which case, let's go baby, let's go. Skull checking right into it. <laughs> yeah, well, how about we're trying to get some into? Nope, didn't really work out. The avatar only has four armor and yep, we're looking at 70 as of 70 hit points. Easy, no problem at all. Not even remotely close. Okay, we need to start shredding it. It against the avatar it really doesn't make any uh, substantial difference whether or not we're standing in the open We have zero cover up here, that is un really unfortunate. But then again, it doesn't make any difference if we do have cover or not, because we already have two of our soldiers out outside of cover. I'd rather take the plus 20% high ground and deal some more damage. Shit, we just pulled more enemies. That is unfortunate. It appears to be capable of repairing its physical wounds. All right, so we do have an avatar that we're, uh, which we're fighting, and we do have a chosen one that is com continuously shooting at us. Plus two codices. Hopefully, the avatar is trying to mind control our um, our Templar. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, good job, buddy. Didn't really work out, right? Wonder how that must have uh, happened come out come out wherever you are you really think you could hide from me let's see I'm willing to try to relocate this guy. Lightning hands shots. Ah, much better. I love it. We're giving Comet Presence to her. 
just to shift over one action. Which means uh, this here is a single movement action. Which, by the way, is getting us to cover. We can then reload. And I would like to do the chain shot to sh completely shred it. It was worth a try. We are going to stay close to the uh, to the, to the rest of the team. For those of you who don't know it, uh, the way that the uh, the avatar works is it can only teleport into a direction or into the li uh, line of sight or field of sight uh, that other uh, that other operatives are seeing, which means in clear English, if you stick together with all of your operators, it has a very limited teleportation range. So far we haven't taken any damage, pretty uh, decent uh, moving around, but I think we're now going to take damage from the codi uh, codex, uh, codices. Wow, they do have a bad day. Overwatch is not going to help them. Mind control? Silence? Yeah. I figured as much. We were at least not standing in in a in a direct um, in a direct line. Oh gosh. I see you. So first things first. I'd really like to mark her. Or him. Secondly, I think this here is. barely out of uh, out of reach justice comes for all Continues to teleport away. That's fine. I'm going to heal up after this turn. One of the main problems is we are having way too many uh, codices here. Yeah, 
Yeah, we need to get back. I think the tracking shot still had us. Avatar is regenerating 5 hit points. We definitely need to continue attacking it. I'm toying with the idea to kill the... Um, the uh, Codex though. That's a bad sign. No, he was choosing the, the uh, Templar again. <laughs> How retarded. That was an excellent, uh, that was an excellent choice. So not only did he misunderstood apparently uh, the first time that the Templar cannot be uh, mind controlled, he decided to do it just one more time. We are continuing with the Avatar. I just think it's the better choice to to stick with it. It's way more dangerous. It's unfortunately also way more elusive. here let's see if we can hit the codex all right cloned itself seven hit points left over Cloned itself again. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. Once they start cloning, it really doesn't go that well. Another psi bomb. Another parry. That's most likely going to be a shot. No, it's an overwatch. Fair enough. Well, we're not immune against uh, against side lances. Okay, let's try to kill these guys. Of course. So, we kill both of them up here.
let's move over here. So the codex is gone. Time to kill the avatar. Long drawn out fight. I think the avatar heals for five again. Yeah, we're back to 34 hit points. Tries yet another mind control. Realizes yet another time that the mind control does not really work. Moving to the front. I will not fail you again. Hitting the avatar twice. Hitting the avatar yet another time. Oh, nice. Critical strike for 10. Reloading and hitting the avatar again. And it's almost down. Six hit points left. Avatar heals back up to 11 and tries to mind control. No. At that stage, he doesn't give a damn about mind control. He just wants to unleash his anger. Surprised about the, the low cooldown about, uh, of his silence. You know what? Here we go. Avatar down to five. And let's finish the avatar. Finally. So, let's heal up. We're already quite injured.
Reloading for everyone. We're green to go. Got it and I think the next stage is to somewhat avoid the chrysalids. Because they are going to definitely annoy us now. And get to the chosen one. We just shouldn't be too annoyed about the tracking shot. It just happens. Moving on target location. Is it clear? And instead, slowly but surely, we should move forward. I know that there are seven chrysalids. That's uh, the the main reason why um, I'm saving all of the healing supplies. I don't want the uh, chrysalid poison ticking down on us. Let's get this done. Keeping my eye on you. Okay, so we killed four codices. We killed an Andromedon, two Archons, Confirmed. that's seven right there, Avatar, eight. I hope it's worth it. I think that was it. Yeah, eight plus the seven Chrysalids plus uh, the Gatekeeper. It's pretty much the mission. By the way, I wish we would have taken um, some more battle scanners with us. This is not going to be a lot of fun. I know that there are, with the exception of the gatekeeper, there are no ranged combatants left it's all about chrysalids but with uh, war for the chosen they have also changed the chrysalid behavior quite um quite, quite detailed uh, prior to uh, prior to war of the chosen they almost never unburied now it happens quite frequently And there we go, chrysalid poison. Looks like you it's really not that much we can do about it. Um, we won't be able to kill a chrysalid on the first go. We hit all of our um, overwatch shots, but we just don't have enough uh, firepower. Down to only two uh, two more charges of our med kit. Still six chrysalids, and if they uh, if they um, continue to just ambush us like the first one did, there is not much we can do about it. And plus, let's not let's not forget that the the level still has an end boss, the gatekeeper.
Hmm. You might think that the that this very sh uh, careful approach is overdoing it a bit, but I tend to disagree. If we're screwing, uh, if we're screwing up and pulling multiples of the chrysalis, it's actually going to hurt a lot. And as far as I'm concerned, the chrysalis poison alone already sucks a lot. That's clearly something that you're usually not thinking through if you're not playing better strike. Because realistically speaking, you're not running into chrysalids that can just charge, uh, charge on you and you can't do anything against it. Let's kill this guy. And let's go in with Perry because maybe we're just being charged again. And the Perry would actually be a nice idea. Fortunately, we can't just parry without attacking first. So as long as something as we're fighting something, we can continue to parry. But not just by standing here. So these have been the two that buried here. There's still a third one. And there are three down there. Okay, I used the round for reloading. It's interesting, this guy does not snipe us to, uh, this turn. Everyone moves into cover. No one will slip past. Navi, baby. Soldier's forces move. So there is the gatekeeper left. And a couple of lonely chrysalids.
Yep, there's the chrysalid. Whew, missed us. Very good. Because now... We can retaliate. Oh, and we even stunned it. Perfect. Loving it. Alright, before we continue, let's shred it. Let's give an aid protocol over here, just in case the chrysalid that just unboard last time on the left flank will come to us, jump up and try to attack us. Okay, so the first chrysalid is almost down, or let's rather say the third one. We're fighting six chrysalids overall, and that's three out of six. So I don't want to trigger the gatekeeper yet. I'm doing that next turn. First reload. In Overwatch. We'll come to you, mark my words, you're going to die rather soon. This is going to trigger the second last uh, chrysalid. And there's Papa Gatekeeper. Codex used when it appeared. This thing could lead anywhere. It may not even be pointing at Earth. As with most things, we'll likely need to bring it back to the ship for further examination. Got a burrow here! protected me. Shit, we're looking at more chrysalids than I would have thought. Shit, we're looking at way more chrysalids than I would have thought. Oh god. Oh wow, that's not good. So what's the game plan here? We need to kill the chrysalids. I don't give a, uh, give a crap about the gatekeeper. The chrysalids are fierce. We definitely need to do something against them. We have four chrysalids and way too less damage. I mean, let's start and try hitting the first one. Ah, uh, the wrong time to miss. Definitely the wrong time to miss. 
which means we're giving over an action because we need the shred. And there is a mild chance of an instant execute. By the way, now is the perfect time for an execute. doesn't really matter where we are moving. All of the positions suck. The bristlets are probably going to overrun us. This is not going to end well. Going to save the healing. Needs to survive that round. Come on, hair trigger. Come on, hair trigger. Shit, no hair trigger. But we're going to kill one of them at least. So here's the deal. We're going to parry one. We do have the chance for reflect and deflect. And since we have full, um, full focus, that might be a thing. Which... Nets us with two chrysalids and a gatekeeper. We aren't have in uh, heavy cover though. Shit, there is another chrysalid. Oh my god, I completely missed that one. Oh boy, we're getting spanked. Okay, let me come up with a brilliant idea. The only problem is I currently don't have any really brilliant ideas. Pretty much in a world of pain here. If we were to run, how far would Mystic be able to run? Well, that's a decent, decent length. If we put him here and everyone else here, Chrysalis can't jump over stones. That's one, two, three, four. Leave still one room um, to, uh, to, to pass. Chrysalis can jump verticals, but they can't jump over stones and verticals at least not to my knowledge uh, that here is blocking um, one two three position ourselves here which means they need to jump up and move all the way around or move up here Mm. One, two, three, okay. Did everyone go there? Yes, we can go there. Only problem is we can't go there and shoot at the same time, and we need a lot of damage. So that's an issue. How about here? One, two, three. One, two, three. That's not too bad either. I mean, if we would be standing up here, okay, 
they can't jump up here they need to go around here or take the long round not the worst idea yet again not enough movement hmm okay I think the body blocking technique is not going to work out um, do we have any small uh, high ground where yeah that's too far away I am afraid that's too far away they're probably going to just burrow down again also we can't out tank them we just took 10 damage and that was a rather lucky turn let's say we're killing one of them this turn that means we're left with uh, two hits and one parry and the gatekeeper can do shit um, I have confidence in our tanking ability but I'm not sure if I have that much confidence do we have eight protocol yes we do have eight protocol which means we could avoid a couple of the hits. A protocol is plus 40 defense. So are we saying we're going to tank this? Is that really happening? Is that really happening? I mean, we could go over here, just body block this side. Mm. Or we simply stay where we are. That's fine as well. Mm. How much damage are we looking at? We don't have chain shot, so. We're looking at a solid 5 damage minimum, that's 21. It's not accounting for any dodges that they could have, 21. Um, two hits, that's 11. We could amplify and that would be enough to kill it. Okay, since, uh, since the main problem is we, uh, we have a small high ground here, this would be a perfect high ground. We could uh, effectively just block the whole tower and fight against the chrysalids there. Or like any um, high ground with only four places, that would work as well. So that, that would be okay, since we don't have it. There's really not that much we can do. Um, so in order to survive this let's amplify the damage on this chrysalid once we trim down uh, this this um, mass of chrysalids we are actually quite okay so reload let's hit the chrysalid Oh shit, you know what? I did not account for standing in, in the tracking shot. We actually need to move out of it. That's why this is going to end very, very badly for us. But we still can indeed kill one of the chrysalids. Thanks to the massive amplification. We're looking at, at high damage hits. Down to three. I'm saving the heal. I mean, that might be controversial now. 
I could heal, but the problem with the heal is uh, I then can no longer um, kill the chrysalid. And I think, yeah, I'm pretty, I, I was right, I can't kill the chrysalid in melee and still be out of the tracking shot. So I need to at least go here, right? Uh, which means uh, we only have her shot. It's going to be 100% uh, hit. And I want to make sure that next turn Mystic is taking the least amount of damage and we will heal afterwards. So it is 8 protocol. Plus 40 defense. Followed up by a kill on this chrysalid. We got a hair trigger, nice. Um, I think we're going to heal him. Although he's going to be re-poisoned, but I really want to make sure that we're surviving first and foremost. Okay, so next up. We're moving on to the complete other side. I will tear you apart. Gatekeeper's disoriented, which is great. That means it cannot use any Psy abilities. We're parrying. The Gatekeeper will probably use its central eye. That's the parry. And now we are looking for misses. There's the first miss. There's the second miss. Beautiful. Beautiful. Only problem that I'm seeing is we do not have any uh, cooldowns left over. So if we can kill another chrysalid, we would be looking at uh, one chrysalid. Uh, plus the gatekeeper because we can block one again. Chain shots not uh, not yet up. So yeah, amplify is weaker than the last time because we only have two focus. We are reloading and hitting this chrysalid. Amplify hits remain um, uh, one. Amplify hits remain a zero. bad we again cannot strike anyone in range uh, I don't want to be hit by the tracking shot tracking shot is really bad it'll give us bleeding and that usually sucks so which means since I don't want to be hit by a tracking shot I need to move and use momentum instead of um, instead of uh, parrying. So I will lose the ability to parry. Bit unfortunate how the tracking shot mechanism this time worked. Righteous 
So we got momentum, so we can move away. Five points of damage is pretty much exactly enough to kill this guy. So if we were to move away, we can take any of the three spots, that's fine. Moving over here, killing the chrys uh, chrysalid, and we're trying the body blocking technique now. One of the issues is we're dealing almost no damage against uh, them, but yeah, well. 93% miss. Anyways, let's move up. Definitely uh, going to get hurt now. Probably a gateway. Well, the body blocking worked. Unfortunately, they still have way too much movement uh, range. That that's a bit of an issue. Gateway. Gateway. Well, I think that's what you get if you are ignoring the gatekeeper continuously. But then again, I mean, it's not that we would want to ignore it, right? We're somewhat being forced to do uh, to do so because we're being swarmed by five chrysalids. I think I know what we're going to do. Move in here. Shredding the chrysalid. Good job, good job. That's not enough damage. Six to eight could be enough damage, but only 33% chance that that actually would work. Um, Eight to ten is exactly enough to kill it. Um, shrink would have sixty-six percent chance to kill it. I think we're going to take that mainly because I want to have a chance for an execute and the shredding on on the other guy. Okay, here we go. Shred, yes. Execute, no. Getting out of melee range. 
I suppose our only chance to go through with this is to continue harassing the chrysalid. And let's use Perry. And let's hope that the chrysalid actually is taking uh, the bait. It is. Very good. So no more extra poison. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. <sighs> Lucky us. That was close. Can't stand next to uh, to the gatekeeper. That somewhat does not work. Let me think. Reloading. I mean, it is what it is. We can't flee forever. At some point, we need to face it. Might be able to kill the chrysalid by ourselves. No, we are actually not. That is disappointing. Seven points of damage. I think. Yeah, that's maximum damage for this weapon. Hmm. We could give it a try. I don't want to waste our sh uh, our um, uh, grenadier because we can a move him still away and b we can uh, we can shred uh, the gatekeeper. <laughs> uh, the hat trigger was good. But missing was not really good. We deny our creators. Hey, why don't you pick on someone your own size? All right. Let's go, baby. Very, very solid damage. We have a chance to stun it, disoriented. No. Maybe just hit it. That's pretty much it. Going to use our momentum. And hide behind this tree. <laughs> we only need the commander alive. It's open season on the rest. Mini attack. <laughs> Missing again. Good lord. Well. Guess who's moving away from me, Lena? Yeah, damn right. I'm going. And take another wild guess. Who's marking you? 
Oh wow, 90% shot missed, really. Okay, let's move away. At least the blue screen rounds are dealing a lot of damage. We're we're halfway there. This time we're parrying. Reload and take a shot. Hit the armor. Request medical support. All right, team. Let's get this done. Also coming in from the side. Still melee attacking? No. Oh gosh! You humans are awfully delicate. How'd you ever last this long? I was hoping I'd at least get a laugh out of this. This is going to be a rather a close call. Giving over one action before moving into the ring and getting out because the crystal poison would kill us next turn. So we're down to three and the Royal Rumble still continues. Very solid damage. Fifty-eight percent. Can we get high ground? No, we can't. Rolling. Shit. I don't want to stand in the explosion range, which means that's as much damage as we can offer. And then we are gently walking away. I think we are not going to take it down. Oh boy. I can see further than you think. I relish these quiet moments before the strike. So in case we're not killing it, 
she needs to get out here as well. We're getting very close to the point of actually being able to kill it. Are you kidding me? Come on, baby. <laughs> Psyblast! And it's dying! Ooh. Close call. We're down to three. But we only got one chosen left. And I know exactly the person who wants to fight one on one against that chosen. There's an art to what I do. Let's do this. Alright, moving into full cover. This mission is much harder than I would have expected. The, the team is, like the team con uh, uh, constellation is not really optimal for the setup. There he is. Let's go, baby. So if they do their little rodeo here, we could move over and hit the chosen from from high ground. To be very careful though that we're still out of uh, range. Oh, there you go, buddy. Big mistake, by the way. We're going to parry. And I like to entertain the idea that we're going to be somewhat safe. Uh, what's over there? We're almost in one shot range, that's the problem. But a bit of armor shredding would go a long way because he has four armor and if he were to lose that oh no oh no oh no. i figured we could one on one him but that was a mistake Okay, so 
I suppose we failed in the sense of not being able to neutralize all hostile uh, agents that defend the gate. There is a very, very slim chance that we can execute him before being forced to leave. Revival protocol. It's no longer dazed. Fully revived. Moves up, and this is going to be her final shot before moving out. Come on, execute. Ah, critical is okay. Just couldn't pull it off. I think the whole I think the whole uh, encounter against uh, against uh, the chosen that was okay, but the the amount of chrysalids that was an issue. Specifically, fighting six of them at a time. So we need to recover. And I need to think about how we're how how we can more effectively fight against the chrysalids. I mean, clearly scanning protocol um, on the specialist would have solved the issue, or battle scanners. But yet again, battle scanners then take another slot. I think we were reasonably equipped to do the mission. Just the amount of chrysalids with that was too much. I'm glad to see that our cooperation with the resistance factions is going so well, Commander. Yeah, and we're paying with eight days of being wounded and being able to reflect about what what did not work well. But it, at least we got the Avatar corpse. I mean it's not completely Lost. Hello, Commander. Um. Oh, nice. That's our main team. And yes, let's get them to level 3, and once this bond is done, they are absolutely ready. Which lets me believe that our covered ops mission is done. This creature your troops encountered may be a critical. No, covered ops still takes six days. Project, Commander. Your okay. To be commended. Yeah, well. Somewhat disappointing, I'm sorry guys, but the chrysalids are actually quite hard. I think an assault could help as well, because shotguns are, on the other hand, effective against uh, chrysalids. Oh really? The chosen aren't afraid to resort to sabotage tactics if it means advanced hair triggers. Okay, so we got a couple of negative effects.
I dislike that you never can uh, that you're never seeing on on the dark event who was affected by it. I mean, waiting until the soldier's abilities just run down. That sucks a bit. Okay. Apparently, our main team hopefully wasn't uh, wasn't affected by it. Good, we could gather more intel, which is fine. We don't need to build faster. We already heal faster. Yeah, the only thing really is getting in more intel. Avenger plotting new course. And let's wait until we can get a revenge for not being able to complete the mission. Commander, there were a few There we go. The Aim plus 4. And we even got a promotion there. Interesting. We said we wanted to have dodge plus 10. And we said we wanted to have that on Roby. Okay, so I think perfect option to yet again take someone with Roby. I think we wanted to do the nine more days for the dodge, and then we're going for warlock uh, for the warlock um, hideout. Yeah, six more days rather. Okay, two more days until our wounded um, soldiers are back and we got the um, major title on our Reaper. We could either get an additional Claymore or Banish. Banish is super good, um, additional Claymore is also very good. So whenever I cannot decide and have enough points left over, and we're just taking both, which would make him a decent choice. Still, his weapon has no upgrade. We shouldn't forget about that. Uh, well, it has an upgrade. I, I, I meant his loadout doesn't have any slots, so the powered, um, powered Reaper armor is unfortunately not, uh, not having a slot so far. Okay, let me check one little thing here in the training center. Uh, with train abilities, I'd like to see if our specialists would have enough points for sc scanning protocol. So we can we can either go with uh, Tepper here, who's almost done. I really like the idea. Or alternatively, Shrink. She was the one uh, accompanying us earlier. She has less points. So I think we're we're just spending the uh, the points of Tapper here and using scanning protocol. That's three points out of our um, XCOM reserve, but I think that's fine. Scanning protocol is super helpful against the chrysalids. So once his negative traits are completely gone, which is soon. We will take him with us instead of her. I do not think I could have predicted this outcome. All right, Andromeda on autopsy. Oh yeah, I remember proximity mine. Such a very bad item. But look at that. We finally got the tech improve for vector rifles. So with the vector rifles. Oh, it's just damage output. Hmm. Well, still good. 
but I was hoping that we would get the extra um, the extra armor slot. Never mind. I'm I was too focused on the armor slot. Okay, negative uh, trait removal. Dark Tower Noxus. Seriously. Okay, how long will that take? 11 days. Okay, yeah. I hope we'll get the negative traits off of him. They are super annoying, uh, the dark events that just give you negative traits. Enemies carry more explosives. And there's a new mission. So, black market permanently closes. We definitely do not want uh, that to happen. So we're going to take this mission. A hidden event. Oh, and a Colonel Ranger. Hmm. I would love to have another Colonel. But I also like to continue shopping at at uh, the black market. So it's going to be yet another engineer. But that, guys, is going to happen in the next video. Um, and I'm going to think about which team we're going to take with us. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, uh, give, uh, give it a thumbs up and leave your comment down below.